is in no all church Bible churches on this Sunday. Therefore, our service today is fully meaningful and it can be found on page 201. So thank you for joining with us this morning. Let us then confess our sins and 
tenderness and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty well, God, who forgives all your children to repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, 
Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and mist and smoke mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon to God. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, that everyone who calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the epistle. It's first from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 3. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says that Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts with the same Spirit. There are a variety of services with the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterness of wisdom. To another the utterness of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by the one and same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one, there's many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is in Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of the one spirit. This 
gospel of our Savior Christ, according to John chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Now, if you understood 
plan of salvation completely. No longer did they lack courage, nor they were confident speaking publicly. Peter, three months earlier, was so afraid that he denied Jesus three times. Now he was speaking to the crowd with confidence and understanding that they had never heard before. There was another spectacular change that took place on Pentecost. After Peter preached the sermon, 3,000 people were baptized. We do not know much about these people. We do know that Jerusalem was packed with people because of the festival of Pentecost. In those days, Pentecost was an agricultural festival. God had told the Jews to gather in Jerusalem 50 days after the Passover to celebrate the harvest. Jews from all over the Roman Empire came. 3,000 of them who were not Christians, who did not believe in Jesus, were changed. Their whole way of looking at God, at themselves, at the world, at eternal life, everything had changed. The Holy Spirit was the one who converted those 3,000 people that day. So Pentecost can be summed up with one word, and I believe that word is change. Change for the disciples. Change for 3,000 people. Our world today needs change. Our country today needs change. We all need change. In the light of what is facing us today, many people are searching and struggling with the meaning of life amidst the world's panic and fear of this coronavirus, COVID-19. However, during recent weeks, there has been a great increased interest in the Christian faith. When all passes by, I hope that many will realize that God is one of love. He does not kill us all. He himself died to give us life, not death. So I hope when people reflect on this crisis, many will know that God is a healer, that God is compassion, that God is love. And that God is near. I hope many can experience God who loves them. In the midst of this crisis, it is pleasing to see how many are practicing love for our neighbor. To see many, especially young people, reach out in love and care for the vulnerable and the housebound. I hope we all continue to practice our love for our neighbor. And when we move out of this lockdown, and move out of this crisis, we will all work together so that a better world will emerge. We are just after hearing that beautiful hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, the first sign it states, Breathe through the deeps of our desire, your coolness and your calm. Let sense be done, let flesh retire. Speak through the earthquake, wind and fire. O oh, still small voice of calm, O oh, still small voice of calm. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to those disciples in a very loud and distinct way, a loud sound of wind or what looks like tongues of fire. Today, he still can do that if he wants to, but maybe he works in a different manner. He may no longer come with a loud sound of wind, or with tongues of fire, or with the ability to speak in foreign languages. Today the Holy Spirit may come to you through quiet trust in the Lord. As that hymn says, O still small voice of calm. If you listen to that quiet voice, on the surface it does not look like anything spectacular, but on the inside, all kinds of changes are taking place. When we combine our trust in the Lord with water, we get baptism. What happens in baptism? On the surface, it does not look like anything spectacular. But we know from what God tells us in His Word, that in baptism, the Holy Spirit changed a person, caused a person, even a little person, to believe in Christ is the start of the Christian path of life. What happens when we come?
applying God's word with bread and wine. As Jesus did in the night, he was betrayed. Once again, it doesn't look like anything spectacular, but it is. Because we are partakers of Christ's body and blood in this sacrament. The Holy Spirit changes us. He strengthens our faith. He increases our love for Christ and our love for one another. God meets us and we meet God through the sacraments. At some stage today or later in this week, read the church catechism in our prayer book on page 766. What does it say about the sacraments in our catechism? An outward visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. Do you want to be more confident? Do you want to be more at peace with God than yourself? Do you want to be less confused about Scripture? Do you want to understand it better? Do you want to be able to share your faith more naturally, more confidently? This is what, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He did it in a miraculous way, an unusual way on the first day of Pentecost. Today, He still does. As you spend time in God's presence, as you witness the baptism, as you take part in the Lord's Supper, albeit present just in the spiritual manner, that's how the Holy Spirit changes people, changes us, turning us more and more into the Christian that God wants us to be. A closing thought on this Pentecost. Why is color red? For the festival of Pentecost, there are all kinds of reasons. Red reminds us, of course, of Jesus' blood which he shed to pay them for our sins. Red also reminds us of what looked like tongues of fire in the disciples' heads. Red reminds us of the invisible fire of faith that is burning inside each of us. A fire which trusts and loves Jesus as Savior. But red is also for danger. So Pentecost is a wonderful refresher for Christians who are in stillness. They need to reignite the flame of fire in their lives. So may the Holy Spirit continue to work in us, to change us, to fan the flame, the fire that is each one of us so that we will love God and love each other. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, honour and glory this day and forevermore.
Almighty God. We give thanks for the coming of the Spirit to your church. We ask that the gifts of the Spirit may be revealed in your people. May the church share the gifts that you have given it. May we go out in the power of the Spirit to proclaim your love and your glory. We praise you and pray for all who have gifts of ministry, for preaching and pastoral care, for the gifted musicians and singers, hymn writers, and leaders of worship. We pray that through the Spirit our worship may be lively and relevant. Breathe in us breath of God and fill us with life and you. We give you thanks for the working of the Spirit in our lives, for the gifts we have received and the guidance we have received. We pray for all those who have been our teachers, for all who have brought us into a fuller, more richer life. We remember our homes and our loved ones. Breathe in us, breath, God. Fill us with life and you. We pray for all of our faithful, especially this time with the coronavirus. We pray for all those who are ill in the hospital or at home. Remember those who are restricted in any way. Those who are waiting for treatment, waiting for operations, or recovering from them. Remember all who are depressed this time. Those who are cast down in the cares and sorrow of daily life. For those who have lost their faith and see no hope. We pray especially for our loved ones. Breathe in us, breath God. Fill us with life and you. We give thanks that you are God who breathes you life into us. And you are the God who restores us and refreshes us. We give thanks that you give you life in your kingdom. We remember before you our friends and loved ones and partners and pray that we may share with them the glory of your heavenly kingdom. Breathe in us, breath God. Fill us with life and you. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers. The sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to come to your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so in the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be cleaned by his body, that our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us.
Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Almighty and different living God, at all times and all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to the promise, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in us, making us your children, and giving us power to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. So, Lord, your people, with the angels, the archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met your Son and brought us home. Dying and living in the curtain now, give us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share spiritually in the body and blood of Christ live his risen life and give light to the Spirit who lights up the world. Keep us firm in the hope you set before us, so we all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual fruit of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your soul to live and work. Jesus Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the words 